Good morning, Dr. R. Michael Fisher here on Greta 2, the Greta effect. Greta Thunberg, Thunberg, I guess as she pronounces it, um, more or less, is the Swedish young activist, climate activist, and now becoming nominated for Pulitzer Peace Prize, which is pretty amazing for a 16-year-old, not the first time, but um, there have been many young people uh, throughout human history who have decided to take things in their own hands, in a sense, in their own hearts and minds to challenge adult society. And so Greta Effect 2, this video, I'm calling, you know, Beyond Hit and Run Activism. So in a way, I'm going to give a little bit of my fearological analysis as a specialty, although in a very short video like this, I can barely begin to enter the depth of what is required to do a fearological analysis of the Greta effect. Greta effect meaning the whole system of things that she is part of, that is creating her, and that she is creating, which, you know, more or less we could summarize as quite a stirring the bees nest kind of thing. Um, she stirred up a lot of things. So in the last video, Greta, effect one, I was looking at how the left and the right get stirred up by her. Uh, obviously, those that just love her and are in great respect and have made her an icon of activism today, the brave and courageous one, the young person who stands out and does something simple, which is really beautiful in her work, the simpleness of stepping out of school uh, on Fridays and so on and basically saying, you know, I want to deal with real things that are really important. Uh, I don't want to waste time or pretend that the crisis isn't as great as it is in terms of global warming crisis and the inactive uh, nature or inadequate nature of adult government leadership responses within society and within education systems. So good for Greta. I did a video on that um, probably four or five months ago uh, when I first saw her work and I was very excited about it. Did a video on that. So I'll put a link to that below. And that's initial response because I think both her personality, her upbringing, her age, being from Sweden, her Asperger's, spectrum autism, quote, uh, diagnoses, etc., makes her very unique psychology um, and sociological dynamic, which really feeds into her profound uh, way of standing up into the world and speaking out and studying and being disciplined like she is and focused as is part of her autism spectrum um, challenge and capability and um, not abnormality in the sense of she's just atypical. And uh, I want to promote and respect that part of her brain, her mind, her particular whole being that is not about to be conformist first and foremost, and rather uh, provocateur and yet obviously has become at the right time um, as if a divine evolutionary spark has said, okay, we need a person like this, like her. And of course, she's going to um, be a lightning rod. And that's what I was pointing on the last video between the left and the right. But not only the left and the right uh, are being triggered and spun and stirred up around her as an effect, in terms of this crisis problem that we face, however one thinks of and constructs that problem. Um, but I also wanna point out that she stirs up the issues between adults and children or youth. And that I frame, I won't be going into it in this video per se, that I frame within the notion that I've talked about in my dissertation work of adultism, uh, equally important as racism, sexism, etc., classism, and other isms that are parts of an ideology of power, 
domination that is assumed to be that um, one group is, quote, superior and ought to control and punish and or eliminate, at worst, um, the other. So adults have this given privilege. Again, that's a whole other topic. Um, but adultism is something that is not uh, typically analyzed as one of the major forms, the major forms, along with fearism that adults can then bring, just like any dominant group can bring, uh, a fear-based, a fear lens upon the other, who is the subdominant group, in this case, children, youth. So again, without going into that, I do want to say that that is also Greta, and I'm speaking to her as well. You have stepped into that modality, and many activists who are you know, young activists will eventually, as I did when I was a teen, as I spoke about in my last video on Greta Effect 1, I also was in kind of a lightning rod uh, uh, alchemical box of fire and flame and resistance um, through the 60s and 70s particularly, but I have been all my life since then. And since that since she's a rebel, I'm a rebel, but we have to nuance and understand what a rebel is. She's definitely a rebel with a cause. She's got a very straightforward cause. And yet what my point being is that Greta effect is so much bigger than her that she couldn't realize she was stepping into fully. And couldn't even predict, nor could her parents or others. So it's not about blaming uh, some of the things she may be doing that are maybe not so useful, some of the things her parents may be doing that are not so useful, and those who want to use her uh, and, quote, support her at the same time for their ideologies and their movements. As I said, the, the left is very interested in her, obviously, and groups like Extinction Rebellion as just one of many involved in crime crisis work and so she is in the middle of that and so typical of a young person especially as an adolescent full of passion and sometimes narrow focus um, exacerbated with her autism dynamic uh, a typical kind of way of processing the world she will be very um, simple in claiming she's just here to promote the truth of the science of climate change. And so she reads that work and she studies it. And then what she doesn't realize is that the Greta effect is so much bigger and she's part of creating that. And it's part of creating her, as I said, in a whole system that she also has to now start to as a young person like it or not, Greta, um, you're going to have to deal with the psychological, the anthropological, the sociological, the historical, the political, the spiritual aspects, dimensions of the discourse of the type of formation of activism you're involved in, which is stepping outside of the norm of society and making certain claims and doing it as a 15, 16 year old person, a girl someone with this atypical neurological system. And so now you're going to also get the attack on disabilities. So your Asperger's, um, that's gonna be attacked as we're seeing in the media. And parents are being attacked, her parents, because she's obviously putting this girl to use for their ideologies, so-called, and that She's obviously suffering as she was crying in her, more or less in her own somewhat very atypical way of emotional expression in her UN speech, uh, which disturbed a whole lot of people. It didn't disturb me. I was just very interested in watching how different and unique she expresses emotion. And again, that's a learning for many of us who do not understand Asperger's do not understand Greta, do not understand even what it means to be a 15 year old in the world today or a 16 year old who is as aware as she is and focused as she is and scared and almost in panic as she admits, etc. And she wants us to be in panic for the world 
the emergency crisis, as she puts it, and others. So you can see there's a tendency for a type of narcissism that can easily go with that as a young person is to be expected um, because I feel this way, you should too. And because I see the world this way with this kind of focus, you should too. Um, that will be always one of her drawbacks to uh, until she matures and goes through stages. And I presume she's going to mature and change up she also may not and she may just stick to the one cause the one simple solution and only look at the science and facts and think that that's all that's important but what she's getting and learning is no there's just a number of as i said multiple disciplinary factors and discourses throughout history that she is invoking so i've already named some left and right uh, she's in the middle of that mess she would not see or does not promote a leftist politics per se, but she is completely appropriated by leftist values. And that probably comes right out of her parental system. And who knows, the parents are the parents and so on. So she has to realize she, she's a political by nature in that way and cannot just deny that that is not important. You should only follow the science and facts, which she sometimes often says. So let's get now to some deeper issues of what she's involved in, which is rights of youth, rights of people with so-called diagnoses of atypical neurological dynamics as systems, and she's going to be defending that in a way, even if she doesn't want to defend those things, she's going to be defending that, defending youth's right to speak out, children's rights for a good life, for a good future, and rights to not be in fear. Freer of freedom was one of the four freedoms of the FDR Roosevelt, and Eleanor Roosevelt was part of forming that, in which became part of the United Nations uh, human rights legislation back in 1948, that every human has the right to have, be free from fear. And so climate change disasters of, you know, type of, crisis that we're in now, well, which was unpredicted back in 1948 with those rights, we definitely have to look at those rights applying to children and respect that. And so anytime we attack children, attack Greta, all the different kinds of criticisms that are coming at her, and they're coming fast and they're growing ever since that UN talk particularly. Uh, she was particularly sort of acerbic in her challenge to and emotional reaction that she wanted to purvey to you know the world and she's getting such attention on her and she's getting such power and access now so Greta you have now have power more power than you thought you might have uh, when you walked out of school one day uh, you know and said I'm just gonna make a sign and I don't want to go to school and I'm gonna sit on the street in front of Parliament in Switzerland in Sweden and uh, go from there well as you see um, things have grown like a virus and a lot of that virus is based on fear that comes through the things that I'm speaking about today, that I'm asking you and others around Greta and the Greta effect. If you're caught in that as a follower, as a critic, let's sit back for a bit and let's just analyze the complexity of what she is triggering as a lightning rod of conflict. And I've already mentioned three or four, all right. So let's go even go deeper. She's involved in the secular sacred, the religious and the science debate that is ancient in the Western world and much of the Eastern world of five, 600 years now, battle for who has the truth and the way. And yes, of course you could say science has the upper hand and should have the upper hand. And I agree to a certain extent in terms of what are the facts and the science of climate change. And then at the same time, what she is doing is she's not just saying, well, these are the facts. She's saying this is what we should do. So now she has a prescription, right? She has a moral and a scientific um, prescription. And once you make a prescription, you're basically now going to tell people what they should do, more or less. Of course, you know, she would probably say, well, you have your freedom to make your choices. So she's a typical liberal leftist type in that way well you know everybody should have the freedom to make their choices however she's quite dogmatic as again i've worked with teenagers for many years that they can be children can be very dogmatic as well as obviously adults can 
So she's involved in the secular and the spiritual, and she does not reflect a spiritual viewpoint or consciousness uh, in terms of what I would say is overt anyways. Again, I do not know all of her history and background or her parents, but um, what I'm hearing in the discourse and the presentations, the many, and she's had lots of opportunities to speak on anything she wants. She goes back to science, which is quite secular. She goes back to really basic facts, which is um, really quite a flat sense of reality, not a hierarchical, vertical, developmental spiral of consciousness. She represents a very narrow band of consciousness, which most activism does. So in a way she comes out so righteous, she hits you and this, and you are taking away my future and, and the future of children and, you know, how dare you? And right, I mean, you can just see it, you can hear it. She's got this kind of dictator, benign dictator um, attitude and performance. And that's again, just not saying she's even crafted that. Maybe she has, maybe it's purposeful, or maybe it's just being a teenager with her quote, atypical neurological uh, dynamics. Well, we have to deal with it. And I'm just suggesting to you, if you're in the middle of all these conflicts, adults to, you know, to child, uh, rights and responsibilities, secular to um, spiritual um, battle and rights and responsibilities within that, again, and going back to left and right responsibilities and the political sphere as a public figure now, you are a public figure. You know, Greta, once you walked out of school and you walked into the public domain, you're now a public figure, which means you can be publicly critiqued. And of course, there's a lot of people who want to protect her from, from criticism and hate and whatever. Well, you know, that's a, maybe a good thing to try to challenge, which I do too. I don't want people to be toxic in their critiques of anyone. So it's not, Greta's not special in that way. Anyone who steps in the public domain and speaks out on things that are really important to her. But you know, when you say this is the truth and that's the tendency that she will purvey as many adolescents do who do not have quote a lot of life experience and or have not studied other areas beyond what they're specially interested in. And I don't see Greta showing that kind of knowledge of while well, Irish shit, she realizes there's a psychology, sociology, anthropology, history, political dynamic that she's also part of and she respects that and she respects that there's a complexity with that no no she doesn't do that um, because she just doesn't have that scope she doesn't have that breadth and some people might see her as you know very highly advanced and, and up here um, because of certain kind of behaviors of what she stepped up into and it looks very brave and courageous and so on um, another level I, I think she would say it's not brave or courageous she says this is just what I had to do based on what I know. And I think that's probably really true. So in many ways, from the theological point of view, she's not really an advanced person in terms of courage development, or certainly not in the higher levels of fearlessness to, to fearless development in fear management systems theory, which I use. Won't go into that in this video, but that's not the point. Uh, I'm just saying the complexity that she is involved in and how, how people read her is quite um, inflated at times, inflated in many dimensions of what they expect from her and over expect from her. And then also the power that she does have and now the responsibility that goes with that. So to hit and run, credit to throw out your things and challenge and critique and, and then basically back off and say, well, you know, I don't really want to argue about all that. I, I, I don't even see her wanting to discuss it. I only see her wanting to deliver it the truth about climate change crisis and then she gives her prescription she she also delivers a prescription one way it's not a dialogue it's not a discussion and in some places that simplicity that you can see people are just so many people are loving oh that simplicity that's so true thank you for being this beautiful child coming out and telling us and it's a very emotional thing as you can see um, way too emotional obviously driven by deep despair deep frustration sense of even powerless hopelessness with the complexity of climate crisis 
and all these different views and discourses about it and the nature of reality, what's true, what's really real. Are we really in that serious of an emergency and who says and how can we actually prove that and we don't know what the future holds anyway. It's all predictions and probabilities. So where's the humbleness, right? So that is what I don't see in her delivery. And so the Greta effect is a kind of absolutist argument, which, which isn't even an argument from her point of view. It's just the way it is, and this is what I've read, and this is the facts, and these are the reports, and from the scientists, and talk, do something about it. And then she walks away. She doesn't want to enter that. And so she's even now, you know, using her tweet to challenge people like Putin or, or Trump um, when they criticize her or critique, and she's being learning the activist skills of, you know, using sarcasm and irony and all the things that get a lot of media. And so any activist, and I'm speaking again to Greta and all around her, um, you're going to end up playing out the game of, of media. And that's where I've always been critical from going way back 30 years, is that you start playing that game of attention grabbing, using fear and anxiety, panic, to get that attention, media game, platforming, and now to the point of a high, she's got a high power privilege, like, you know, unbelievable within a very short period of time. And that, of course, can burn anybody out with that kind of popularity and all the demands around it. And then again, not really engaging in dialogue and inquiry. She's basically just an absolutist as is a, a young dictator. And, and that's not even blaming her at one, one iota a bit. Uh, it's very typical for young people to be that way when they're in that narcissistic development period of uh, this is the way I see the world and think the world and feel the world. And I want others to do that too, because it's so important. And now that I've got an emergency that I'm trying to save the world from, um, it even becomes more extremist in uh, such a good cause, right? To save the world, a very dangerous uh, place to play. And unfortunately she's picked her own heroic savior as any young person does in various ways, looks for the hero heroes and the scientists of climate change. And she probably has other heroes that she has already picked who she will defend and she will fight for to the death metaphorically. And the consequences of that, of course, for a lifetime when she's so young and what's ahead of her, we, we do not know and cannot predict, but I know people are rightfully, uh, as I am I, uh, cautious and concerned. Uh, that doesn't mean she shouldn't do what she needs to do. And it will be a learning process for her and all those around her in the credit effect in the whole system on all sides. So uh, the last thing I want to close with this video of is just something, a very simple notion that um, I'm basically asking Greta and others in both sides, all sides, of the effect that she's acting as a lightning rod for is to look at eco-anxiety, eco-fear, in a very complex and nuanced way, not just a superficial way of, you know, Greta's fam favorite quote, it seems it's been reproduced on poster after poster in many of the climate marches is, you know, youth are not here to make the world hopeful. Uh, and I don't want people to, adults to be hopeful around me, more or less is what she's saying. I want you to panic. And that's a quote. I want you to panic. And that is not a good direction for you logically to go through. It's not a good fear management strategy. Um, you can make all kinds of arguments rationally, as you do, Greta, and many others who support you, that, well, but it's an emergency. The fire realm is burning, right? The building, the city, the world, the earth, the mother earth is burning. That is an emergency. The fire alarm is going on. Red lights. Siren. Why aren't we... You know, doing something about it, adults in the room, step up, you know, she says often. Well, that's creation of, and part of a construction of, 
based in some reality and also that's a very constructed psychological reality that is being created and a sociological reality with power and politics behind it every politician every leader throughout history who ever really wants to get people's attention creates an emergency it's a common political strategy so Greta, you are using political strategy and so you have to realize you're a political player and you have to realize that you're playing in the big game politics and trying to basically get attention on what you think is more important than something else well you're not going to get a lot of agreement with that when you start being pushy about it and you can be pushy about it and learn from that see i'm always saying that whatever you're doing as a leader when you step up just be prepared for it if you want to hit be prepared for it to come back so don't go running and not engage with the hits you have to engage with the hits now that's a complex topic what does that mean to engage with the hits the, the conflicts right that come back to you the criticisms and so on it means to be responsible for them oh that that takes a lot of big self that takes a lot of maturity and development um, the likes of a, a very great leader and you know Greta is not a great leader she whether she deserves the Pulitzer Prize for great leadership in the world is, is very debatable uh, and on my part is is very doubtful but there is so much emotion and iconic symbolization of what she represents that great if she gets the prize that's fine um, but it's not um, really all that rational and it's not well thought out of what's going on another topic for another time um, i'm really focusing on from a theological perspective she has to realize that when you hit and remind people of their death which is called a mortality prompt in the, the psychology of social psychology of terror management theory which I highly recommend she studies and all those who are involved in activism study. And I, I'm glad to see there's little bits of study in the Extinction Rebellion movement going on. I've heard some of their leaders, founders, talking about they're looking at terror management theory a bit, but I have not heard any deep understanding of that theory. I've studied that theory off and on for probably 20 years because it's really essential to fear management, right? Fear management education is my specialty. So terror management theory is really important to look at one of the major ways that we need to understand how humans collectively and individually uh, understand fear, manage fear. So without going into that theory, because that's not the purpose of this video, I've written lots about it in my work, which you can search if you want. You can also search out the terror management theory in Wikipedia and so on. Point being is that that theory basically says, Greta, if you or anyone, could be not just anybody, anybody who wants to start a war, wants to start a revolution, wants to start activism and step up and challenge and hit out, which you have your truths that you want to propound upon the world and preach. And you have to understand that you're triggering people on deep mortality issues right the deepest fear or one of the deepest fears of the fear of death that human organisms living organisms carry instinctively in its billions of years old and of course it's very twisted and pathological perhaps one could argue as i do in a culture of fear which we live in today so understand we already are in a culture of fear as a context as many have said and i've been saying for 30 years Greta, you have to understand that you have to understand that's actually the context and so to bring up what, whatever the issue might be, it might be foreign affairs issues, it might be gender issues, it might be race issues, it might be climate crises issues, you're bringing up, especially with climate crises, you know, probably the most, if nuclear, of course, disaster is very close to this nuclear war disaster um, as for pollution, but you're bringing up in that, you're playing in that big game, that extreme game of end time, of extinction. I do feel that adults have a right to extinction rebellion techniques and strategies. So I support that. But I think it needs a lot of theorizing. It needs a lot of deep thinking and a lot of 
critical praxis behind it to really think about things like terror management theory, my fear management theory, and others work on the effect of eco-anxiety, which is now the label, uh, eco-fear is what I call it. And I'm just gonna end this video to say those are a pile of things not meant to be a nice crisp video and all summarized with bullet points and fancy colors and music. But just real stuff, you know, really blunt, really basic. And I'm probably using the approach of a, a really basic approach like Greta herself, because I can really relate to much in her personality and my own. And uh, highly support the growth and maturity and the crit criticality that's required, the fearological analysis around what she is doing you are triggering people so you're hitting them and running and many activists do this oh my gosh it goes way back in so much of activism not all and uh, i've seen it and experienced it so many decades and it's pissed me off to no end personally um, when i see people who want to hit and run and don't really want to look at the nuance and greater expansions of information and contexts and interpretations and perspectives to a grand problem that they're promoting and have a prescription for and we should just follow them because they're wise and they're they've got the truth they've got the science and if they don't have the science they've got god's word allah's word or whomever right the authoritative voice behind them that is somehow unassailable uncritical um uncriticizable is what i really mean and so Typically, youth and children will fall into that because they, they don't have the background for understanding and the education for those kinds of larger perspectives and dynamics. In systems, evolution. Okay, so um, I think a great effect too here is uh, let's get beyond the hit and run approach we have to because it will only create more and more divisiveness animosity hatred if you want but all of that all of those are symptoms of this deep eco fear eco anxiety that's the point of my talk today uh, look forward to having any conversations look forward to your comments on this video and other teachings from the fearological perspective